Hey guys, welcome back to the Miss Finance YouTube channel. So today we're going to do things a little bit differently on the YouTube channel because of late I keep seeing posts from individuals who are feeling deflated in the jobs, they're feeling a little bit put out, they're doing overtime, just not really, either not getting enough from the jobs, so not getting the experience that they thought they were going to get, or they're starting to look elsewhere, or for instance they're just not getting the support that they require from the jobs that they're in at the moment. So I'm going to tackle some of the questions that I've been asked recently, which might help you. So first of all, just know that you're not alone. So if you're currently sat there in your job and you're thinking, I'm really just not enjoying this at all, um, how come nobody else around me seems to feel the amount of stress that I feel or that they're happy to work these ridiculous hours, you know, work until, you know, 11 o'clock at night or staying in the office till seven, coming in at seven o'clock in the morning, etc. And you're thinking, is this really what this industry is like? Well, I'm going to answer that. Yes and no is the honest answer because yes, we do have deadlines and yes, um, particularly when you're working in practice, there are multiple deadlines for clients and there's no if, buts, coconuts when dealing with HMRC and those deadlines, they just have to be done. And what I'd say is that when you work in industry, you have a little bit more flexibility around those deadlines because usually you've got month end deadlines, you've got audit deadlines and year end deadlines but it's not as stringent as when you work in practice. So how do you resolve this issue if you are somebody who is working till, you know, stupid o'clock or taking your laptop home at the end of the day and coming in on weekends, etc.? Well, what I would say, first of all, is that's a clear indication of two things. So either there's not enough staff in the practice to cover the amount of workload that there is, and that's not your, you know, problem as a student or somebody who's first starting out. That is the manager's responsibility to make sure they have enough staff to cover the workload. So if you are feeling as if you are overworked, then I would go and speak to your manager and see if there's anything that they can do to support you. What I'd say is never feel as if you can't talk to your manager because specifically when you're working in practice, there is this tiered sort of um, system that I've spoken about before in another video. So your manager is there to support you and then the partner is there to support the manager. So if more staff are required in order to make sure that you're not working these ridiculous hours, then more staff's required. It might even be that you yourself are starting to feel a little bit burnt out because you've been working all of these hours, you want to do a good job and you don't want to seem like the person in the group who's complaining, etc. But let me tell you from experience, that is not the best way to deal with that situation at all because what might end up happening, and it might be where you are now, is that you continue doing these ridiculous hours, um, you continue being stressed, you know, you're not getting the sleep that you should get because you're worried about all of the things that you've got to do the next day. So if that's sounding like you, then keeping quiet about it and just simply thinking, well, I'm just gonna go find a new job and that's going to resolve all my issues is not the answer. So what I would say again is that communication is absolutely key with your manager. And if you've already had this conversation with your manager and nothing has been done, it's always worth revisiting it because there might be a legitimate reason why nothing has happened. So for instance, they might have put out a job application for additional help, additional staff, and just not been able to recruit anybody as yet. And there might be other things going on in the business. But what I'd say is that managers, or the managers that I've worked with in the past, really do care about the staff and they don't want to lose the staff because let's face it, if you've spent time training a member of staff up and then they decide to leave, well then all of the time, hours and input that you've put into that individual, you've now got to start again, you've got to hire somebody new who might not be anywhere near as good as that member of staff for all you know. So it's not a win-win situation when somebody leaves a business. It's actually quite the opposite, especially if, you know, being a manager in the past myself, if you've got plans for that individual or you can see them going further and you're starting to map this out for them after they've qualified, etc., and then they move on and it's like, ah, oh, no. <laughs> and obviously you understand why, but, you know, you, you do look after your staff, or at least I certainly did and continue to to this day. So yeah, it's, it all comes down to communication. Now, if you are somebody who is now looking for another job, I'll give you the advice that my granddad always gave me in that the grass is not always greener elsewhere, which, yeah, it's, it's, it's stood true. It definitely isn't 100% greener on the other side. 
And you might be somebody who's working in practice who wants to go into industry because industry tends to pay more. And you might be underpaid where you are now, or you might feel as if you are because you're doing all these additional hours and you don't get overtime, etc. In industry, you don't tend to get overtime either, if that's a question that you, you have. And likely as well, in industry, you might be thinking, I need to go work in practice in order to really understand accounts, really understand TVs, etc. Because sometimes you don't necessarily see that side of things because usually, um, depending on the size of the business, you have auditors who come in who do all of that side of it and you don't get to see it, you just answer their questions, for example. But if you're at that point where you, you know, you're starting to look because of the fact that you feel overwhelmed, you feel anxious, you, you're not looking forward to getting up um, in the morning and doing that job, then perhaps it is right to start looking elsewhere and seeing what's on the market. So a few tips for you if you're in this situation is if you're dealing with recruiters, do not let them talk you into the first position that they have available because they may have been trying to fill a certain spot with a company for a long time. And the reason that they have is because that company has a reputation that might not necessarily be a good reputation. The other thing, you may say to recruiters or you might start applying on Indeed and Read and they may get your details. And you might say, look, I'm looking for a part-time job, but because they have roles to fill, they will talk you into getting a job that fits into their criteria or they might not even have a job available but they've put it on the site in order to get your details so i just be wary of that if you are dealing with recruiters not all of them are like that there are some very very good recruiters very nice recruiters that i've dealt with in the past and that students have dealt with who have been fantastic and i still have contact with quite a few of them from my side um as is and they've always been great but there are occasionally <clears throat> those that are not looking after your best interests so just word of warning there and if you are looking for roles etc um, you might be thinking I just need to get out I just need to find a different job anything's got to be better than here do not just jump at the first thing that you see do your research do your research into that company have a look at, at Glassdoor reviews etc so anywhere where their staff can can leave a review about the company have a look into that have a look at the individuals on linkedin who work there etc get a bit of an understand about them how long have they worked there etc because it's always a red flag if you find that individuals have come and gone within a company in a very short space of time so if they've got a high staff turnover then you want to be wary of a company with a high staff turnover because it's a case of why do they have a staff a high staff turnover is that because of the company or because they're not necessarily supporting their staff, etc. So there could be other reasons why, but just something to be aware of. And I guess some other piece of advice is if you have to hold on for the right job, then do so. And it might, you know, every si it, sometimes when you've decided that you're going to leave a place, even spending the, the hours in the day just seems like this massive thing and, and that, you know, the hours are just counting down and you bored to tears you just want to leave and you want to start something new and fresh and exciting and you can't because that job isn't there or you can't find it or you're going to have to compromise on one of your um, requirements such as part-time or flexibility or hybrid work and etc in order to just go somewhere else so what I'd say there is just just hold on it's frustrating and I have been there before um, I've waited more than six months for the ideal job before today um let me tell you, it was a wait and a half. <laughs> so, yeah, I've definitely been there. But if you are, again, going back to my original point, if, if you are looking, make sure that you do your research about the company you're going to work for. Make sure you don't just do the research about the company. Have a think. Sit down one day and have a think about where you want your career to be in the next three to five years. It doesn't have to be more than that. Three to five years is sufficient. So do you want to be working in industry? Do you want to be working in practice? Do you want to have achieved a certain job title by then? Do you want to specialise in, say, being a consultant eventually? Or do you want to specialise in um, tax planning, for example? Or do you want to specialise in being, do you want to change careers altogether and become an insolvency practitioner, etc.? Don't be afraid, even if you've been in this industry for many, many years, to decide that actually you want your career to go down a different path. That's okay. Just research it and research what you need to do. Do you need to take a pay cut potentially to get the experience that you need to then be able to do that job in the future? 
Do you need to change your career path completely? Do you need to look at how to get a job in X? So do you need to, for instance, go and work in practice for a little while as um, an accounts trainee before you can then move on into audit, if audit's where you want to be? Have these conversations with individuals in the know. So if you have a question about a certain career path, put it in the comment section because I'm more than happy to answer and I've got plenty of contacts in the industry who can answer if I can't answer. So I'll always ask that question for you. Or ask a mentor or just ask somebody who already works in that industry. And a lot of the time, people who do work in accountancy in one form or another or bookkeeping and, and not insulted at you asking a question. So I guess the whole point of this video is just to let you know again that if you're having these thoughts and feelings, if you're stressed at work, if you're anxious, if you're thinking it's the end of the world or you're not enjoying work in accounts and bookkeeping right now, just know things can change and they can change within a very short period of time for the better. And again, just bear in mind what I've said regarding you know recruiters, new jobs, maybe the grass not always being greener. Do your research, ask the questions, and again, if you've got any comments, um, questions, etc., put them in the, the comment section below and I'll always, always answer any questions that I receive. So, yeah, I hope you found it useful and I hope it's given you a little bit of peace of mind and a little bit of guidance and tips there. If it did, then do hit the like button. Consider subscribing as always and I shall catch you on the next video.